What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome back to another Football Manager Simulates and today we're doing a video that's been very highly requested and that is Steven Gerrard as manager of Liverpool. We're going to see how he would get on if he was to take over Jurgen Klopp's side right here and now. Of course Klopp has just signed a new deal and Gerrard is doing very successful things at Rangers. I believe he's got them to the Europa League knockout stages for the first time in many many years. I say believe. I know he has but either way it doesn't seem like it's going to be an immediate transfer, but I think a lot of people expect at some point Steven Gerrard to take over from Klopp. Their contracts both expire at the end of the same season. The stars are aligning. And well, we're going to see how they would do if they aligned slightly prematurely. So here we have him, 39 years old, Steven Gerrard, pleased to be in charge of one of his favourite clubs. And uh, yeah, we're going to see how he gets on uh, during his time here. We've given him a two-year contract initially on £120,000 a week. Going to be interesting to see how he performs, and uh, well, hopefully you guys do enjoy this video. Just as a heads up, we've got more experiments and simulates coming your way soon, including the worst possible manager in charge of Man City. How would a manager with one in every single attribute get on with debatably the easiest team to manage in Football Manager? We're going to find that out very, very soon. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see that. If you do enjoy this one and you have another weird or wacky Football Manager simulator you would like to see, leave it down in the comments. And without further ado, let's get into this. So to start off this FM Simulates, I have to give a shout out to the sponsor of the series here on the channel at the moment, and that is the OneFootball app, which is a free app available for iOS and Android. You can use it to subscribe to teams, to divisions, to certain players, keep up to date and get all your footballing news on one centralized free app to download. I use it on the daily. If you play Football Manager, you have teams that are obscure that you can't keep up to date with, but feel near and dear to your heart. One Football allows you to keep up to date with them. Check the referral link at the top of the description and a massive thank you to them for sponsoring this video. Okay, guys, so we've gone forward a singular year to start things off here, and this is not a very pretty sight, is it? Liverpool down in fourth. Now, Liverpool are very, very good in Football Manager this year. You can see their media expectation was second. Good news is... He's lasted at least one season. Well done, Stevie. Let's have a look, shall we, um, at what they got up to in the transfer market and such. And, uh, well, you can see here, we did disable the opening transfer window so you would have Klopp's team for half a season. But in terms of what he did in January, he splashed the cash. He brought in Alex Tejas and also Bruno Fernandes. So two very big additions to the team. I actually quite like the signing of Tejas because Liverpool do definitely have a lack of players at left-back. And Bruno Fernandes, a very good creative player, Interesting that he decided to bring in a kind of more traditional number 10, you know, a central attacking playmaker. But if we look here at their formation, this is how they've been lining up Liverpool. He's had Fabinho at centre-back. I could only hope and kind of assume that is because Van Dijk's been injured. Ha has Van Dijk been injured? He must have been, right? There's no way he's not been. He did have a groin strain. Okay, that's a bit of a relief. That would have been concerning if... <laughs> he decided that Fabinho and Gomez were his starting centre-back partnership. But yeah, pretty underperforming first year. Fourth place, not ideal. You can see here, long-term plan, preference to be manager for Liverpool. Short-term plan, pleased to be in charge of one of his favourite clubs. He's done... Hmm, is OK a fair analysis? I'm not sure it is. Fourth place is not that great. Let's see how they got on in the various cup competitions. And well, you can see here, they started off with a great little win. They beat Man City in the FA Community Shield 3-1. Unfortunately, uh, they went on to lose against Chelsea on penalties with James Milner missing the crucial penalty. That's a little heartbreaking. In the Champions League, it looks like they did pretty well and kind of navigated their group with relative ease. They lost in the Club World Cup final to River Plate, though. That is shocking. Quintero with the only goal of the game. I mean, that's pretty. this is pretty disastrous so far. In the EFL Cup, they lost in the quarterfinals to Tottenham. Uh, I, I'm, I'm over that. I'm not. <laughs> that doesn't upset me too much. In the FA Cup, how did they get on? How did they get on in the FA Cup? They lost in the semi-finals to Man City. That's excusable. And they lost to Bayern Munich on penalties as well. So, I mean, I don't know if you could, even know if you can call this an average season. I would say this is distinctly below average. Let's see what he was able to get out of Liverpool strike force. And, well, it's kind of the usual suspects as the front three, Salah, Firmino and Mane, have a very decent goal haul between them. They got 60 goals between the three of them in all competitions. Origi got nine goals as well. But yeah, they, they did quite well uh, in terms of getting the most out of their front three players. Let's have a look at the league. Was their goal scoring the problem or was it their goals conceded? So... 
They conceded 36 goals, which isn't that many, but they actually, in the league, only scored 62, which if we just rank teams, you can see is quite a way off the pace of Man City, who scored significantly more. You have to wonder if maybe they were playing a little bit over defensively. In terms of top goal scorer in the league, do they even have a player on this list? They do, Salah. So Salah got 14 league goals, and he was their big performer. I feel like when you look at him, you'd expect him to get a lot of league goals in truth. You can see he got zero in the Champions League, which is slightly uncharacteristic. In terms of highest average ratings, how did Liverpool's squad get on? Salah was a big performer, as was Mane. So to be fair, and Firmino's there. Uh, Van Dijk as well played 28... No, didn't play 20 games. He's 28 years old. He played 27 games. Um, you can see here. How many games did Tellez play? Because Robertson's done very well on the average ratings. Obviously, I imagine that Tellez was brought in mostly as squad depth. But I can't imagine he's going to be the kind of player who's happy sat on the bench. He played eight games. But most of those... Actually, a lot of those were in the Champions League when he was back at Porto. But you can see here in the Premier League, three appearances off the bench and five sub-appearances. I feel like for £34 million, that is not a great deal of impact. What kind of impact did Fernandez have on this team as well in centre mid? He, he actually did quite well. 7.22 average rating, four goals, two assists. We'll let him off the hook. He definitely deserves another season to show what he's made of. But yeah, pretty average first season. Um, I'd say that's disappointing by all accounts. You can see here um, a few Liverpool players making up the best 11. We'll go forward another year. I, I'm curious. I assume they've not given him another year on his contract, so he's only got one year left. He's going to have to earn his spot. And, uh, well, shall we see how he gets on? That lack of tactical knowledge might be coming back to bite him. Well, folks, it's not lasted very long. We've not even got to the end of his contract. Steven Gerrard... I assume is sacked because he's not he's not Liverpool manager anymore. The current managerial position is open, so maybe they let him go at the end of the year. We can have a look at the manager movements here. Yeah, they let him go at the end of May. You can see Frank Lampard was let go as well. So for England's golden generation, it's not been a particularly good year on the manager front. But yeah, they've let him go at the end of the year, which can only mean he's been underwhelming again. You can see for season two, their prediction was second. They finished fourth again. I guess the silver lining here is at least at least they've got Champions League football still. You can see Wolverhampton Wanderers had an amazing season. Wow, that is a really impressive season by them. Only one point off Liverpool as well. Let's have a look at what went on here. So Firmino, top goal scorer with 22 goals. Salah got 11 and he also got most player of the matches. Um, we will be able to see that Gerard spent some money here. You can see this is the bar chart for last season. So in his second season, he spent a lot of money. 200 million... Oh my gosh, that's making my eyes water. And he brought back Mario Balotelli. I mean, I don't know how to feel about that. I'm saying it with a smile on my face, but at the same time, it kind of hurts. But yes, he brought in Mario on a free transfer. I love that. The other players he brought in, Dybala was the big, big addition. Clearly, he watched my Liverpool Let's Play earlier on in the year. Signed for £106 million. They brought in Rueg here, who looks like a kind of squad depth player. Probably a replacement for Klein. I say a replacement for Klein. Klein's injured for the entirety of the first season in Football Manager. But yeah, he's a good little kind of versatile right-back player. They brought in Marcus Edwards, former Tottenham trainee, who uh, recently, I believe, went to Portugal, I want to say. He's been loaned straight out, so he's not really had an impact. But they did spend some big money on some other players. Um, we'll go through this from the lesser signings first. They signed a young French player who looks pretty good, but he's a regent, so we're not too interested. They signed another young regent. Did they just go hoovering up all the French young players? And they, they got this guy who looks very, very good. Right, real players. Who have they got here? They've got Ricardo Orsolini. I butchered that name. I can only apologise. He looks like a versatile attacking option. He only played seven games in the league. Zero goals, zero assists. How much did they pay for him? 25 million. That's terrible. And they brought in Malang Sar, who's a really good centre-back, to be fair, in FM. He played 10 games and got a 6.87 rating. Was he brought in in January? Uh, yeah, he was. Okay, actually, looking at it, they made a lot of these signings in January. How did Balotelli get on? Did he have an impact? No, he literally barely played for the club. I guess it's a good job they brought him in on a free. Dybala had a pretty good season, 13 goals, 5 assists. We can look at their past 11s here. Looks like they might have relegated Mane, although did they sell him and I missed it? Let's have a look at the sales. They did sell £64 million worth of players. But none of the kind of big names being sold here, you know, this is a lot of squad players and Liverpool do have quite a big squad. 
Um, so it's not entirely surprising to see them offloading these players. But certainly, for that kind of net spend, you would have been expecting something big from Gerrard. And well, let's see how they got on. In the Champions League, there's lots of draws and defeats, but it looks like they will have done enough to make it to the knockout stages. In the EFL Cup, they won the final against Tottenham, so he did get some silverware. Fair play to him. Mo Salah with a brace in that final to get them the win. In the Champions League, they made it to the semi-finals. They got knocked out by uh, Manchester United in the FA Cup semi-final at Wembley. That's going to hurt. They won the Champions League on away goals, the semi-finals. But unfortunately, in the final, they came unstuck. They lost 2-0 to Barcelona. So to be fair to him, he got them all the way to a Champions League final. But the fact they lost that final and the fact they didn't finish anywhere near the title again probably made the the coaches decide there was time for change. Having managed football, uh, Liverpool in Football Manager this year, their expectations are extremely, extremely high. Like, they want to be winning the Champions League and winning the league in the first two years. So, yeah, he didn't really live up to those expectations. And I guess when you spend close to £140 million net spend and you finish 28 points off the team who are top, there's kind of questions that have to be asked. And unfortunately, those questions were asked of Gerrard and he didn't really have the answers to them. Um, if we look here at his um, career stats, uh, not career stats, sorry, milestones, we can see how he did as Liverpool. So you can see that Champions League runner-up, that was kind of his big achievement, really. I guess the Carabao Cup was a nice cup to win as well. But yeah, all in all, just a, a little bit disappointing. You would have hoped for a little bit more. And yeah, he didn't even last two years in the end. Just his inability to really truly compete in the league was a problem. You can see the best 11 here that he played looks very, very good. How did Fernandez get on? He got seven goals and seven assists. Did Mane just kind of get relegated out of the team and not play as much with Dybala's inclusion? It looks like he still played a decent amount. But to be fair, look at those goal tallies. That is crazy. That is a cr The top five players there have scored so many and their average ratings are so high. I can only assume that defensively they struggled. You can see Malang Saar came in and he was a big January signing for £50 million. He really didn't live up to the billing. Joe Gomez struggled as well. It would appear that Liverpool never really got a partner to go alongside Van Dijk. And so, whilst he had a pretty good average rating, in fact, a very good average rating, really, um, just unable to you know, solidify that back four, ultimately cost Steven Gerrard his job and he just couldn't quite achieve the high expectations that the club had. But anyway, that's going to wrap up this video from me. I really hope that if Steven Gerrard does take over Liverpool in the future, it goes slightly better than this. But it was very interesting to find out and see how it went on. Um, I know some people are going to say with the shorter term contract, giving him a two year one, maybe that played into his sacking. Um, quite possibly. I, I think it probably played a small role in it. But at the same time, he, you know, he achieved quite a lot. And in the end, um, they sacked him. Um, if we look here at managers... So they just didn't think he was doing enough. You can see he only won 62% of his games. I say only. Um, that's not, not a bad total by any means. And two cup wins is decent. But I think Liverpool expect quite high things in the league. And simply finishing top four two years in a row just doesn't quite cut it. If he'd won the Champions League, probably be a very different story. And they wouldn't have sacked him. Because, yeah, they sacked him on the 29th. So they sacked him the day after that Champions League final against Barcelona, which is a little bit heartbreaking to think about. But anyway, this is only a simulation. I'm not going to get too upset about it, but still, interesting to see what went on. If you'd like to see more videos like this, of course, as I said earlier, leave some suggestions down in the comments. If there's a, a manager you would like to see at a club, maybe Tony Pulis at Manchester City, Sam Allardyce at Barcelona. The weird, the wonderful, the realistic. I want to hear all your, your suggestions down in the comments. Hopefully I see you guys on the next one. It is me, Jack, and I will talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.